Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 133. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Shouts out to PodCon once again. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, everybody. My name is Taya, owner of Just Tire Brand LLC. Happy to be here. <laughs> that this is a philly situation so international hype didn't need the saying come in the building and let y'all know all about that now this is episode 133 the title kind of got you in here you thought this was something that it ain't we're not looking to you know spark up any controversy we don't need CNN talk <laughs> but it's your body is it your choice this topic comes from uh if you're a woman, it would be somebody asking you for your eggs or asking you to be the surrogate mother of a situation. Your sister, cousin, best friend or whoever couldn't carry or is having a bit of a difficulty having a baby. How do you perceive that as the woman? And then we also flip it for the man. Uh, somebody needs a little sperm and they're asking you for your situation. So now we will take it to you and say somebody asks your man for his sperm. Do you feel as though that that is a situation that he can answer that for himself? Or is this a conversation that y'all need to have? I feel like he need to discuss that with me because no, that I say a- hold up. I say is that a situation where you feel like he can give the answer, or do y'all need to talk about that? That's what I said. I feel like it's something he needs to discuss with me. He can't just give an answer and say yes because that's going to ultimately have an effect on us. I mean, whether you're giving somebody sperm or not, that's still a, that's still your child. All right, so do you feel the same way about the eggs or being a surrogate? I feel the same way about that as well because now that man has to be with that woman while she goes through nine months of pregnancy and it's not even to carry his child. And we all know, I ain't trying to be controversial, but (laughs) any man who has a woman who's had their child knows that that's a journey that is not very easy. And now you're going on that journey with that woman and it's not even for your benefit, it's for somebody else's benefit. So it's definitely a conversation that has to be had. Because then, you know, it's going to be six weeks of no sex afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Talk so about I- it. <laughs> that, was we, that was when we found out how much I really like you. Um, so I wholeheartedly agree. Because uh, where I got this from was watching TV. Somebody was having this situation. I've been here myself before. You know, somebody asked me if they have a couple of more hypes. But I... Uh, it's not what we can do. I didn't even talk to my wife about that. It's like, I can't have, yeah, like you just, if you just donate in the sperm, but if I know little Ricky around the corner is really my damn son, it's no way in hell, like, I'm not just actively in that situation. There's no way I'm going to just act like, oh, no, I ain't never know. You look just like, I remember uh, my daughter, when she was in like kindergarten, a little like, fat, light-skinned young boy walked past. I looked at my wife and said, I would question me if I seen him too. <laughs> like, that didn't look right <laughs> but I feel like yeah it's your body but it's definitely it can't be your choice if you're in a relationship if you're in a no. marriage a long term relationship or a situation this is definitely something we need to talk about because it's just something that's going to affect both of us when like you said that nine months is a rough situation we all gonna lie and say the best night of my life was when you was born, but the best night of my life was I was drunk somewhere. It wasn't when my daughter was born. So, <laughs> like, I like to keep that a bean. Uh, like you said, that nine months is a rough situation on her body physically or her mentally. Once she yeah. has the baby, then it becomes right. a whole physical and mental situation. The thing people right. never talk about uh, is the thought process of a man after a baby is born. Uh, right. We actually did that episode. You go back in the archive. Shouts out to my guys from This Better This Way, TJ and EJ. We did that one, you know, a long, long time ago. Um, the perspective of a male after the first child was born. Because we got a lot of thoughts and things that go through our head after that happens. And then you feel like there's a... If you go through all of the... It's like when you lose... A, it would be like, essentially, you losing a child uh, at birth because you went through all of this buildup and then it's just... There's nothing at the end of it here. And 
I think that that's a lot to ask somebody to put themselves through now. I'm not saying that, you know, you couldn't do that for your sister, cousin, or whatever. It's just something that y'all really need to talk about. Y'all really need to have a real honest conversation about that because it is far more than just, like, can I borrow your drill? Exactly. Well, you kind of are asking to borrow somebody's drill, but pause. Well, I mean... <laughs> 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 I didn't mean to word it like that, y'all. I wasn't. <laughs> damn, that was a good. That was a good one. I, I got. I got to give you that. Um, just damn, I wasn't even taking it there. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think that's definitely yo know, an adult conversation that we need to have now. How do you handle it though if he says like, "All right, well, even though you don't agree, like I really that's my brother." I really want to help him and his wife out. Not saying he's going to tag his man's wife, but you know, he just goes in a couple of magazines, he handles the situation and passes off. If he still goes through with that, how do you feel like if you didn't agree with the situation, could you be able to, like, is this a deal breaker or, you know, talk to me about that? Um, It probably would be a deal breaker because at that point he's showing me that my feelings aren't first. You know what I'm saying? Your brother and his wife can get somebody else to help them with that situation. Hold just saying, up. <laughs> yeah, hold I'm just saying. You could. Right, so hold up. It's cause Why do it have to be you? So wait. Because you said down that your feelings are first, so do his feelings not get to come first? He feels like he wants yeah. to handle that situation. I'm playing devil's advocate because like I said, I'm not doing it. But, I mean, I, um, well, okay. So not yeah, saying he my feels feelings. like I mean, my like, feeling, not my feelings above his, my feelings above theirs. You're willing to do something for them that I'm totally against, and I'm the one you're in a relationship with. You're willing to do something for somebody else in their relationship that the person you're in a relationship with has a problem with. So that's essentially putting their feelings before mine. That's what I meant by not putting my feelings first, not over his, but over theirs, over what they're asking him to do. I mean, like I said, I don't, I agree with you because, yeah, if my wife was like, oh, well, no, nah, because that's my cousin and I love her or my sister and like, yeah, like, I don't agree with this situation. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, you got some people who are like, you know, I really love this person this much. And I mean, like I said, I ain't, if that's what you're doing, copy, it's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're not saying like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did this. How could you type of thing? But for me personally, I would be like, we do get to gotta reevaluate our situation here is if you making these type of life changing uh, decisions and it's not even that you're not taking into account to what I think, because ultimately you do be the one that has to make the decision. But it's like if we're this far apart on this, then how the hell we go forward on whatever else life going to throw at us? Right. All right. Now, we're going to move on to the next segment of the show. I ain't trying to be mean, but I'm just saying, you know. I mean, copy. Like I said, I ain't trying to be <laughs> You can't be holding my... Uh, I mean, technically, that would be his nephew and these two, but... That's what I'm saying. You can't hold my Dewalt drill. <laughs> now, this is the Get to Know segment, sponsored by Custom Hustle. At Custom Hustle World on Instagram is Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, custom jackets. We have four versions of the sneakers, CH1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s, available in any color that you can think of. The custom which, jackets which, are... Which, um, what sneaker was that that you had on when I saw you? When I if saw I, you, I had... I, that was one of the CH3s, the red and black ones. These yes. are also the CH3s. The, these are the pandas that I got on the day. You know, okay. imagine how to hustle with height. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I was telling everybody, I said, I met this boy at Parker. He got his own sneakers, man. He, oh, yeah. Well, you know, let him know. And <laughs> I I at Custom Hustle World, you let them know however they want to put it together. You know, we do the football, basketball, baseball, hockey jerseys. We got the cargo pants, the flip flops, the barber capes. If you cut or do hair, we can situate you all the way across the board. Um, but that is at Custom Hustle World. And one, I appreciate the love because you definitely did put the video out and tag me in the joint. Because I peeped that you was, I see, I tell people all the time, I pay attention to everything. I saw that you standing here with the camera when we was talking, and I said, all right, well, hold up. So let's make sure she gets a good shot of us, so that way she can get the whole sweatsuit. <laughs> but, yeah. Everything Custom is content. Hustle. That's my model. Everything is content. I tell people that all the time. My, com my conversations are currency. Mm -hmm. um, so Thanks. this is the Get to Know segment. So now, this is what I want to know. I'm going to throw a year out here at you, and you're going to tell me what you first think of and how old you was. 1997. 
1997, I was 16. And what's the first thing you think of? I'm 16 and... Mm. Biggie died. I mean, you like Kareem in third period? Come on, you give me something. <laughs> yeah, dang, you know I'm old. I'm joining Blake. Let me think. <laughs> 97, first thing I think of is being up with you at the playground, watching the basketball games. All right, so now tell me this. Does your high school crush, <laughs> does your high school crush still looking decent? You don't know or like, ah, I, don't know. I missed it. You don't know. I don't All right. Know. <laughs> he copied it. I, don't, I don't know where he is. I haven't laid eyes on him in years. Now tell me this. Since you told me this pre-show, what have you done to make Dr. Umar proud? <laughs> what have I done to make Dr. Umar proud? <laughs> Let's see. I only date black men. Okay, copy that. <laughs> so you don't have no saltines in your no saltines in your situation. No nope. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing your child has ever done is my child. Yes, what's the best thing he ever did? She. Um, Jeez, my me. daughter is a teacher in the Philadelphia school district. Because you got to be a school boy. We need more like you. She gets a pretty strong individual to deal with those little lovely people. <laughs> fifth grade. Fifth grade. Oh, yeah. They think they're grown and everything. They probably be cussing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. My daughter in the fifth grade. Hold up, man. Let me find out if that's a teacher or not. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to recommend one TV show, what would it be? The Wire. Why did you choose the greatest TV show of all time? Because it's the greatest TV show of all time. The greatest written TV show of all time. All right. See, last week's episode, I asked KC the same thing. Shouts out to my man, KC. You Avon or Stringer? Avon. You Avon, too. So, again, I'm the same way I asked KC this. If y'all listened to last week's episode, excuse the repetitiveness, but, you know, we listen to this every day, babe. You think when uh, Stringer came, I mean, when Avon came home that he didn't mess everything up, arguing with Marlo over the corners because Stringer already had the bread flowing in and everything was smooth. Stringer was shady though. We glossing messing, up me back messing back with the Angelo shit yeah. and all the stuff with Brother Munz on. That's why he wound up getting <laughs> killed. He was doing too much. He was doing too much. <laughs> Copy that. Uh damn. All right, yeah, yeah the wire is definitely uh, the greatest. <laughs> Do you ever think we're gonna get a season six? No. Cause you know, D'Angelo's son, you know how things go these days. It'll be the rewrite. D'Angelo's son is now Avon. Like, you don't think we getting that ever happen? I think that the show is stamped enough in history that we can just keep watching those five seasons over and over again, discussing them daily and keep them moving. I don't think we need a, a season six. Copy that. Now we're gonna slide into the next segment of the show. This will be the get to know segment. Get to know a sponsor you by H2H Cleaning. That's my cleaning company where we do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling. Uh, if you need it, we can make it happen over there at H2H Cleaning or Instagram only. If you make it worth my while, we will definitely slide out of town and get you all the way situated if that's what you need. But big jobs are little jobs, and we are here to help. So just tell us how we can help. Now, this is the part of the show where you give us the whole rundown. This is all you right here. <laughs> I'm only going to interject periodically. When I have a question or two, but the floor is yours. What do we need to know? What do you need to know about me? All right. First of all, I'm the owner of Just Tire Brand LLC. Uh, I'm a social media manager for the Mr. Know It All podcast. I also um, do all the topics on the Mr. Know It All podcast from beginning to end, the format, everything. So if somebody is um, looking for a social media person to run their pages, where would they be able to find you to tap into you to see if that is something that you could possibly do for them to do? On Instagram at J-U-S-T-T-Y-A-B-R-A-N-D-L-L-C. Copy that. And y'all hear those DMs are wide open. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> 
We talking business. Don't get business. the wrong idea for business. We talking, for business. We were talking, yeah, we were talking business. No drill shit. You gotta situation. be specific yeah. these days. Copy, because these niggas are goofy. I see, I figured, yo, you know. Because somebody would take that clip and be like, he said your DMs was wide open, and then they'll leave off the other part. So we gotta make sure we say it's for business. Yeah, absolutely right. See, that was the school teacher that you cultivated there, okay? <laughs> we made sure that the class understood the assignment. I see what you're doing there. That part. Um, also, um, social media manager for a restaurant called Here is Philly. It's the old sister Muhammad Kitchen. Um, let me see. I am where's an author. Where's, as you up. Can where's, see. where's that one located? You got to get this. Is what we need to know. We need to know the vital information. Oh, my bad. I just assume know. that people know Sister Muhammad Kitchen. My bad. 4441 you Germantown said you Avenue. You said you just you're. Your daughter is a teacher, so you know everybody's not as quick as everybody. We have to slow it down for the kids in the back. No problem. Four 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 one Germantown Avenue. Copy that. I'm also an author. My book, first book, first cup of tea, no sugar, came out uh, February twenty second, twenty twenty one. Is almost three years old. Um, I also have. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's about me and the healing process. I use myself to help people learn how to heal, basically. Well, right, um, so hold up. I got a question down about that. What was the best thing? What was one of the hardest things you learned about yourself through the healing process? That I had abandonment issues from a kid that followed me all the way up until probably about 35, 36. How did you deal with that? Well, my abandonment issues started from my dad leaving. Well, we left him, and then he came to visit one day and said he'd be back in two weeks, and then I didn't see him again until I was, like, 16, and that was when I was five. So that little girl lived inside of me for a long time, and it carried out in all of my relationships. So I realized I had to fix that in order to function. And it wasn't even just with men. It was friends, family, whatever, like anytime it felt like somebody was leaving, I either try to leave first or it would just like crush me so bad when somebody leaves. Now I'd be like, all right, peace. You weren't meant to be here. So that's how I know that, you know, I've overcome those abandonment uh, issues. I like that answer. Did you dive into any of that in the book? Absolutely. There's a whole chapter on abandonment issues. It's called mm -hmm. Abandonment Tea. Abandonment tea. So do you go two uh two sugars, no cream in that, or do you? <laughs> well, no, as it says, a fresh cup of tea, no sugar. So it's a triple entendre. drink. My name is Taya. That's tea. I'm spilling tea about myself, and then I use tea as a metaphor, like making a cup of tea as a metaphor for the process of healing. You can do it as many times as you need to, and you only use your own ingredients, and you have to like the way it tastes. That's what the no sugar is about. I don't need no sugar. So you go equals and all of that copy. Um, no, nothing. <laughs> no sugar. Where can we get the book from though? <laughs> it's on Amazon. Amazon.com. Yeah. All right. You said the book was three years old. We're going to have to dive a little bit deeper into this book situation. Wait, I wasn't done. Hold on. No, no. So we, we, also... we, no we, we ain't done. We ain't done. But we oh, know okay. the book okay. situation sounds like we may have to bring you back on to talk about this whole book situation. <laughs> Absolutely. So go ahead. You wasn't done though. So what's funny is I think, well, yeah, this when people see this is gonna be February nineteenth. My author anniversary is the twenty second, so it'd be perfect timing for me to use the footage for this to talk about my author anniversary. So, you know. I'm all about cross promotion. I'm all about it. So uh, market, marketing and promotion, as you can see, I'm are all about <laughs> cross promotion. Or um you make anything pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, look, this is why my poster is in the background. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just post promotion. Um, so I'm also a self care advocate. I have a journal. It's called Self Care's Bay. Before anything else, um, and for six weeks, you have to be intentional about practicing self care every single day, even if it's for five minutes. So people always say, oh, I don't have time for self-care. I'm like, yes, you do. You literally, when you get up in the morning and brush your teeth, turn your favorite song on or your favorite two songs, right? That's you doing something for you before you do anything for anybody else. And it gets you in that practice. It doesn't mean that everybody else is last. It just means that you're first, even if it's for five minutes. Shouts out and that's on Amazon, Amazon as well. 
So, uh, again, you were supposed to... I, Shouts out to my man Bruce because we did it. Bruce and Leroy, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to my man out in Dallas, Texas. Who's Leroy? Yo, hold up. Salutations, as my man would say. Huh? Last Dragon is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, it's, it's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, it's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, it's my favorite movie of all time. You'd have stepped on the next episode when we I got the glow now. I got the glow. I used to <laughs> be man. that awkward person. They talk about my clothes. Now I got the glow. They can't touch me. I'm just saying. Me and Bruce Please. did the episode about self-care. <laughs> um, we both said that our self-care was horrible. So, <laughs> Well, hopefully after this, you'll do better. So now you said, though, self-care, you said that was a six-week process, though? So, yeah, you had to be intentional for six weeks about practicing self-care. And at the mm -hmm. end of it, it should show you what keeps you from practicing self-care, what you need to work on as far as self-care. Yeah. So what do you think the first step of self-care? So wait, is? I gotta make this very clear because you said you and a man said this, right? So my journal, self Care's Bay, is called that for a reason. Remember, I like triple entendres. So Bay stands for before anything else. Bay is something that you could call a man or a woman. And self-care is for men and women. On the cover, I got a man and woman hands. Actually, a husband and wife to make that point that it's for men and women. Because men always be like, oh, self-care is for women. Nah, self-care is for men and women. And that is why I made it the way that I did. Nah, see, now, I'm not saying any, yeah, you do need your... All right, so <laughs> your self-care is definitely not like a woman's thing. We not, oh, nobody say all the time, yeah. Yeah, but nobody say go get a pedicure. Um, it's basically take care of yourself, prioritize yourself, and you know, have a moment to love yourself. Which, you know, copy nobody's saying that that's a bad thing. And if you're saying that that's just a thing for women, you just foolish. We appreciate you for hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast. We only accept five stars, but that's foolish if you think like that. Um, <laughs> my last question on that was though, what do you think is the first step to self care? Is, is being able to say, I need to practice self care. I don't think people realize how important it is, right? We all out here moving and shaking. We all out here doing all this stuff for other people, taking care of our family, working, podcasting. You know, uh, you got the merchandise, you got the cleaning company. But at what point do you say, I'm going to do something for me? And if you start mm -hmm. your day that way, I guarantee you the rest of your day is going to go well because you're going to feel like I did something for me. And I'm like I said, it could be watching the episode of The Wire, like it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's not anything for somebody else. It's only for you. And I literally do not go a day without practicing some form of self-care, even if it's for a couple minutes. Copy that. You got anything else that we need to know before we wrap up episode 133? Let's see. Let's see. What else? I'm also a book editor. I've edited two books. One is um, Reality Bites which is based on Meet the Parents by Jay-Z, um, by author Terrell Brown. And then I recently edited a book called um, Improve Your Shooting Percentage in 24 Hours Guaranteed by um, Kenyatta, McKin Kenyatta McKinney, um, which is my friend that is also a coach. He wrote a book that teaches people how to increase their shooting percentage in 24 hours. So. And when we talk about your shooting percentage, what exactly are we talking about? Uh, we, again, for, yeah. the, for the kids Look, in the Somebody always the do that. We're talking about basketball. <laughs> basketball on the court. On the court. Are uh, we court. talking handle J's copy between the legs? Okay. I mean, you got to explain this for the kid that's sitting in the back. Like, okay, I was the kid sitting in the back of the class trying to talk to the girl in the green. Okay, I'm not paying attention to nothing that Miss Jackson. Yeah, because somebody else thought it was about shooting a shot, and I was like, no. Hey. It's basketball for That's basketball of, players see, who want to you improve them. their shooting percentage. See, plus I knew I like you had the double entendre situation going on the whole time. <laughs> just like you just said with the DM slide, let's make sure that there wasn't a double entendre. We wanted to make sure that the we want to make sure that the listeners get all the correct. Touché, touché. <laughs> But yes. nah, I definitely appreciate you for coming on episode one thirty three. Uh, we will definitely have to bring you back because uh, you got a lot going on with these book situations. And books are very easy to dive in and make topic after topic out of. So one more yeah, time, so mine. It doesn't. It covers just about everything. Before I close it out, let them know one more time where they can follow you at and where to get the books from. You can follow me on Instagram at J U S 
T T Y A B R A N D L L C. A fresh cup of Tino sugar is on Amazon. Uh, Self Kids Bay is on Amazon. Reality Bites is on Amazon, and t- improve your shooting percentage in twenty four hours on Amazon also. So basically, get your Prime subscription together, and then you'll yeah. be iced on all of these situations. You have all, all right, the books in two days. That's episode one thirty three. <laughs> so I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having me on. We listen. Pyrocon did the damn thing. Look at all these connections being made off of Pyrocon. You know? Telling you, Wallow, I got like five episodes out of this. Shouts out to Wallow. <laughs> I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>